Saxon for the Brick Car Production Cup and Production Sports Car Series on a glorious sunny afternoon. We've got an hour and a half of great racing. Let's go over to Jake for the commentary. Cheers Rachel, sunny skies and scorching hot temperatures await the drivers in this 90 minute race here at Thruxton. Keith Webster and Ed Cockhill will be on the front row of the grid as Lone Rangers in their respective cars, the Jeff Steele Racing BMW and HE Racing Seat, the TCR Seat and SG Racing Seat are on row two. Intersport BMW of Wayne Gibson and Kevin Clark on fifth position on the grid, then Simon Roach and Simon Mason in the Fold Sport Seat. The all new Mike Moss Racing Team in their BMW M3, formerly known as Bubble and kick are there in seventh on the grid and then the leaders in class three in the westlake say toledo class four leader is the synchro motorsport honda civic all new car driven by alan james replacing the jazz and keep an eye from the back of the grid because adam hayes and mark radcliffe will be there in last place in the number nine intersport bmw due to issues in practice but no doubt they will fly through the field they're on the starting line now and the lights will go out and then we are away for the fourth round of the brick car production sports car series we are racing and down through the first corner at alan Keith Webster, look at the lead he's got already on Ed Cockhill. Johnson, Cunningham, Gibson and Tom Howard in their wake at the moment. Fantastic stuff as Cockhill just keeps a close brief on Keith Webster but he can only watch it from a distance as he blasts away into the right-hander at Campbell and then out through Cobb as they fly towards Seagrave. Up the inside there, that's Nick Adams in the Damax BMW, the 66. Going around the outside of Mike Gorton in the MGA Mazda. We're on board now with Rich Bennett who this weekend has got the Lotus Fanatic Chris Randall beside him in the uh, Porsche 993. He'll take over later, of course, but he makes a nice move there on Chris Hayes in the Westlake set at Toledo. Through Noble and then through the right-hander at Goodwood. Up through Village and then towards the fastest corner in British Motorsport. It can only be Church. Do you use curb? Do you not? It certainly is not a decision for the faint-hearted. Flat out on the throttle, and a few drivers already making a few moves. There's Webster, way out in front in the Jeff Steele BMW. Then we have the HG Racing of Ed Cockhill, and into third place now. That is Peter Cunningham in the SG Racing Seat, and through to fourth goes Graham Johnson in the TCR Seat. They both lost a little bit of ground early on to Wayne Gibson in the Intersport BMW, but now he's down to fifth position. And look out, because behind you, boy, you've got Tom Howard in the 13, Mike Moss Racing Machine, brilliant battling for third position in the early stages. Through goes Ed Cockhill. A real tall order for Ed this weekend because Harry is not there. And still we see the Damax BMW of Nick Adams battling through the field. Fantastic to see them. And what looks like it's going to be a very positive weekend for them. They've had a few issues throughout the course of this year. Don't forget them pulling off at Rockingham. They'll certainly want to forget it in a hurry into the pits. Who's this that's coming? This is Chris Hayes in the Westlake Sayer. That's very early, so clearly an issue for them. And through goes the Intersport BMW of Adam Hayes past Rich Bennett in the Porsche. I did say it wouldn't be long, and they're certainly making light work of the tail enders. So, on board then, we saw Rich Bennett being taken on by Adam Hayes, and it won't be long before he's on the tail of these four, who are having a fantastic scrap. Cunningham at the head, then Johnson. Oh, this really isn't looking terribly promising for the set of Toledo boys. And that's Gibson in the 33 BMW, having got past Graham Johnson. Is he going to be able to stay there? No, and round the outside goes Tom Howard. He's got both of them. He's got both of them round the outside into the club chicane. Brilliant move there from Tom Howard. He caught them both napping. They spent too long watching each other, and now he's shot up into fourth place. Great move from Tom Howard opportunistic as you like and now Graham Johnson trying to chase him down Wayne Gibson has suddenly wondered why he's gone from third position to sixth in the space of a few corners but that's Thruxton for you tight Fla fast flowing and it's definitely going to make for some exciting overtaking moves and this is just the early stages of course now Tom Howard is trying to size up Peter Cunningham to make a move for third position great stuff from this all new team now back on board with Rich Bennett and up in front of us is Simon Roach, that is, in the Fold Sport Seat. They started sixth on the grid for this one. Class two winners at Rockingham, of course, so they're riding the crest of a wave at the moment. And they'll want another strong finish here. Now, this is Tom Howard trying to make his move on Peter Cunningham. He has to back out of it, and that's surely going to cost him some momentum. Graham Johnson right behind him now, trying to push the way through. Well, Chris Hayes in the Westlake Seat goes back out again. But how long is that Toledo going to last? It doesn't look like... It's going to cost them too much. Oh my word, they're all at it. They're all at it. Here we go. Cunningham has now got Gibson right on his tail. Tom Howard is in amongst them. Tom Howard trying to fend off the chasing. Graham Johnson, who goes round the outside in the TCR car. Can he hold it? Yes, into fourth place. Tom Howard can't defend. And now Wayne Gibson is in his clutches. Here they come. 
Gibson right in close. It's Sayat, Sayat, BMW, BMW, but do not expect it to stay that way. Here comes Gibson. He tries to get the undercut on Tom Howard, and he's got plenty of straight line speed. It's under the braking zone. Gibson now gets him around the outside as they go into the right-hander. Very close indeed as Tom Howard stays there on the apex of Campbell. Tries to tuck back in for Cobb. And he just hasn't quite got the momentum. Some great wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff between these two. Now we're on board with the guest machine, the zero car, which is usually the higher machine, so anybody can have a play on it. And this weekend it's going to be Skid Carrera and his co-driver, Anthony Shemans. They're currently taking on the Ginetta G40. That's Chris Webster, a fairly new driver to the world of British motorsport. He's certainly doing a good job. Oh, there's a spinner! That's the Honda Civic! That's Alan James! Alan James goes off through Goodwood, and that was a scary moment. And it looks like that car has come to a premature stop. No, he's got it going again. Well, this is a baptism of fire for the Synchro Boys. They've just built this car, and it is very much their own work. That's how they like to do things. This car replacing the Honda Jazz, of course. Now we're on board with Skid Carrera, trying to make his move on the inside of Chris Webster on one of the fastest parts of the course. Um, oh dear, this is Chris Hayes making a return visit to the pit lane. I would not be surprised if that really was game over. Oh, Skid Carrera watches Chris Webster go round the outside as Chris Hayes out of the car, under the bonnet. What on earth is going on in the electronics or the mechanics of that car? Oh, and into the pits comes Adam Hayes. So Adam Hayes, goodness me, their weekend is just going from bad to worse. They had a problem in qualifying, and now it looks like they've got a problem in the race. This is way too early to be making a pit stop for a schedule uh, of any kind in an endurance race, so it's definitely not scheduled. So more problems. That's Guillaume Grochet of the uh, Newbridge team, following in the wake of Rich Bennett and uh, Simon Roach in the Fold Sports Seat. Oh, that, definitely doesn't, that def definitely doesn't look good there from Chris Hayes in the... Uh, Oh, sorry, that's Adam Hayes in the number nine into Sport BMW. I wish you boys wouldn't have the same surname. Up the inside comes uh, Ed Cockhill to lap the back markers. So pretty good pace they're setting, but they can't currently keep up with Keith Webster at HE Racing. Ed is doing the very best he can, but they're flying away. Now the battle for third position continues on, and up the inside comes Tom Howard. Ooh very close he's actually for fourth position because Gibson has got past both of them goodness me they turned in there and Cunningham left him no room for error at all very nearly clipping Tom Howard as he went by but fortunately that was all it was a near miss now Graham Johnson in sixth place trying to make his move once again on Peter Cunningham for fifth position very close indeed between the two but the BMWs have once again got the advantage so on board with the Porsche of Bennett, diving up the inside on the approach to Club Chicane. Oh, that was not very well timed. I'm fairly certain he made the move stick, but Cunningham now fending off Graham Johnson. This is SG Racing versus TCR. Sayat Supercopa on Sayat Supercopa. A great battle between the two. Now this is on board with the leader, Keith Webster, as he approaches uh, a battling pair of back markers. It's both in Class 4. Alan James in the Honda Civic, currently running behind Mike Gorton in the MGA Mazda. And this is the problem you've got. Well, Rachel has found out what's going on down in the pit lane. Car number nine has just come into the pits, the second car that's actually just come into the pits within moments of each other. Uh, the throttle cable seems to have uh, snapped, uh, they're working away on it at the moment, so fingers crossed the car will be out there very, very shortly to continue with the race. Fair enough, that's definitely not what they wanted. Liking those shades, Rachel, at least you're keeping cool. Guillaume Grouchet, once again, sizing up Simon Roach in the Seat as they come out of Club Chicane. Across the finish line once again, and Guillaume is definitely trying to make his move now. Well, it looks like they've got that throttle linkage sorted out at Intersport BMW, and Adam Hayes exits the pit lane, just making sure he doesn't speed in the pit lane there. Those speed limiter guns have to be used for something, and why not motorsport? Up the inside, Howard makes his move on Gibson. Down into the chicane, and he nearly loses it on the entrance, but a fantastic move there into Campbell. And as they fly out of Cobb, he's definitely got some straight-line speed advantage now. And he'll have the momentum from that move to eke out a little gap, and that is for third position. So a brilliant first race for Mike Moss Racing. They really have transformed their outfit in the last few weeks, and it certainly looks like it's a winning combination. Whatever they've done in that team, it certainly seems to be going well. Well, that's the black and orange flag. That's a mechanical problem. I'm not sure who that's for. Is that for the 88 they just showed it to? 
That's the MGA Mazda. I wonder if that's leaking oil on the circuit. That's usually the only reason they'd give it. Well, into the pits comes Mike Gorton in the Mazda MX-5. And let's have a look. Oh, yes. Yes, that, that's a hanging exhaust. So no wonder they were given that flag. That really is a disastrous moment for them. Oh, dear. Also coming in very slowly indeed. That's Alan James in the all-new Civic. That's definitely not going well. Disappointing times for the team that won their class at Silverstone. And it's certainly not looking like another win for them here. Up the inside then as Adam Hayes gets back on with it. Trying to unlap himself now, of course, because that car was sitting in the pits for a fair while. Skid Carrera once again battling it out with Chris Webster. This is easily the closest battle on track, and not just in terms of split times. It's also close because they're nearly rubbing doors. Fantastic stuff between the pair of them, both very fair. Well, Guillaume Grochet has brought the uh, Newbridge Porsche into the pits, and it looks like the Seat Toledo of the Westlake team is still in there. Skid Carrera once again trying to make his move on the inside into Cobb. Can he make it stick? Yes, very nicely done, Skid. Well done, sir. Skid by name, but certainly not skid by nature. That was very well knit in the bud. Beautifully done. And now, once again, the battle for third position as Tom Howard desperately tries to get away from Wayne Gibson. Slightly different spec of uh, BMWs, these one. M3 versus E92. And certainly here, it's a fantastic battle as they head towards Church Corner. Who's going to lift? It looks like neither of them did through there, but certainly a performance advantage off the corner from Wayne Gibson. It's going to be wheel to wheel down to the chicane. We'll be back in a moment. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. <laughs> Welcome back to Thruxton. You rejoin us just as Tom Howard in the Mike Moss Racing BMW continues to defend from the Intersport E92 BMW of Wayne Gibson. A great battle this one for third position on track and a credit to the boys at Mike Moss Racing, this new outfit that is making its debut here out of the shades of the old bubble and kick operation. They really have found some form. So whatever they've been doing over the last few weeks since Rockingham has definitely played into their hands. They've definitely got some potential there. Now into the pits again comes the MGA Mazda. Oh dear, the exhaust has really fallen from the barrels of the car there and is now dragging on the floor. Goodness me, that's uh, very battle scarred. I don't think it's actually been uh, in contact with anyone else on the circuit. We certainly haven't seen it, but the mechanics go to work to sort out that exhaust, which is having more and more problems as the race goes on. That is a disappointment. I hope Nicola Gillett gets a chance to get out there on uh, what has to be an absolutely terrifying day from the perspective of the drivers sitting in the car with this fantastic heat that's out there. We just saw uh, Ed Cockhill, second place overall, taking on Rich Bennett as Guillaume Grochet makes his way back out onto the circuit just in front of Rich Bennett. Ed Cockhill goes through. That's a good thing as far as he's concerned. He's not going to get held up by the uh, production sports cars. And they're going to go uh, Porsche versus Porsche. And a little further back, it's another German mark going head-to-head. -head. BMW versus BMW. And there is uh, Tom Howard in the M3, battling it out with the E92 of Wayne Gibson. Still these two battle on for third place, having now dropped uh, Graham Johnson and Peter Cunningham in their own secret little battle for fifth position in their respective Seats. Here we go. Once again, Guillaume Grouchet and Rich Bennett. Grouchet in the Porsche Boxster. That's run by Newbridge Motorsport, who not only compete here, but they also compete with the Porsche Boxster in the uh, BRSCC Porsche Championship as well. Very much an experienced hand at these uh, disciplines of racing and with this car. And Guillaume Grouchet certainly seems to be settling into life as a brick car driver, really starting to feel the flow of this championship. And he's put in some great performances so far. And uh, Rachel is down there in the pits. Oh, she's found Alan James. So Alan, uh, tell us what happened and also was it on Friday the same thing happened to the car as well? Yeah, unfortunately we were testing at Castle Coombe on Friday and the day went brilliant. It was perfect all day, yeah. apart from 4 o'clock, unfortunately we broke a dry shaft. Um, the guys worked hard yesterday and managed to get it repaired, but um, unfortunately it's just gone again now, coming out of the S's. And I spent the whole qualifying and the race staying off the kerbs, protecting it and there's nothing more we can do, nothing more unfortunately. And it's uh, the first time you've actually driven in this car and it was doing really, really well out there. So are you, are you very proud of the results 
to date, apart from the fact that the drive shaft is down? Yeah, for us to get a car out, you know, we're all amateur, we'll work at the factory, it's all our spare time and hobby. To get the car out first race and first time at the circuit, really pushing it, it's, yeah, we're quite happy with that. So there's a lot of positives. The cars, we've improved it a lot since we've been here. There's a car showing very good potential. Yeah. And compared with our little Jazz, it's a massively different car. So, uh, yeah, we'll be back. Great bunch of guys down there at Synchro Motorsport. You can't find a harder bunch of men who work on a machine. Now, on the inside comes Rich Bennett taking on Guillaume Grochet. And uh, the 993 seems to be doing better than the Boxster at the moment, but they'd better watch their back because here comes the battle for third position overall. The two BMWs in separate classes, let's not forget. Tom Howard and Mike Moss in the BMW M3 are running in class two, and they're battling out with the Intersport BMW E92 running in class one with Wayne Gibson at the, at the wheel. They couldn't care less that they're in different classes. They want to go for an overall podium, and it finally looks like that... Uh, Exhaust on the back of the MGA Mazda has got itself sorted out thanks to the mechanics and it looks like Mike Gorton will get another chance. Oh, into the pit lane comes Nick Adams. So uh, the Daymax BMW makes its way into the pit lane and it looks like an early driver change. Half an hour has gone. So it looks like the last hour is going to be driven by son Tim who gets his way into the car. Now there is the leader, Keith Webster. There's certainly going to be no driver changes from Jeff Steele Racing. Normally it's Michael Simmons who's used to going it alone, but he's not here this weekend. Keith Webster returned for Rockingham, and they took a win overall, and the fastest lap of the race. But uh, here they've taken pole position, and Keith Webster is leading on his own. So into the pit lane comes Graham Johnson. So he will now hand over to Mike Robinson. Driver change coming up then at TCR. This is about the right time for some teams. Some teams like to pit in after about half an hour and then hand over to a driver for one hour of the race. Uh, some tend to make it exactly halfway or as nearer to halfway as makes no difference around the 45 minute mark. But uh, interesting choice then. Graham Johnson coming in fairly early, half an hour-ish or so in, as Ed Cockle makes his way past the potential championship leader here. This is the ING Sport BMW of uh, Anthony and Mike Wilds. Anthony has started the race. He's going to hand over to uh, Mike Wilds, his father, who is uh, very much a veteran of the world of motor racing, has driven pretty much anything with an engine and wheels over the years, apart from motorbikes, although he'll probably try and correct me on that one in the future. He's probably done it at some point. I wouldn't put it past him. But they've had a great season so far, a winning Class 3 at Donington, a winning Class 3 at Rockingham, and they're certainly shaping up to be championship leaders. Now into the pits comes Cunningham. So Peter Cunningham is into the pits, and he's going to change uh, to to give the car over to Mark. So Mark will get into the car and look at Peter Cunningham. He looks absolutely shattered. So uh, he can't get into the car yet, of course. He's got to wait till the pit work is done. So in comes the TCR Seat. In comes the SG Racing Seat. Puff of smoke there from a very hard charging Ed Cockhill. Pushing very hard indeed. I hope that's not terminal. I think that was just a little bit of an error, perhaps, maybe, or are the tyres going off? That is going to be a bit of a factor here. A lot of the drivers have been a little bit worried about the longevity of the tyres on a hot day like this. Thank you for that beaming smile. You are racing. Surely you're having fun as well. But Ed Cockhill flying through, trying to make up some ground on Keith Webster. Don't forget, of course, they are in separate classes. Keith Webster in the Jeff Steele BMW is in Class 1, and the HE Racing of Ed Cockhill is in Class 2. So as far as they're concerned, it's still looking good for a win in Class 2, and that means the same amount of points as uh, the Jeff Steele Racing BMW, of course. But there is a lot of pride to go for as well. They'd love to get an overall victory. So far, it's been Class 1s all the way for the overall win. But the Cockhills have not had the start to the season that they had last year when they were overall champions. They've taken one win so far. Oh dear, that's not good. It looks like uh, Alan James and the uh, Synchro Motorsport boys trying to get that car push started. I'm not too sure how much of that uh, is going to work. I don't think they've had enough time to repair that drive shaft. Could well be the end of their race. Now there is uh, Tim Adams in the Daymax BMW. He will run onto the finish line. Don't forget, this is a fairly new team to the world of brick car, fairly new team to the world of motorsport. You can see that uh, yellow, the yellow sticker with the black cross on the back of it. That proves that they're rookies. So uh, they're very much starting out as Ed Cockhill makes his way fairly seamlessly through on the uh, exit of Seagrave as he flies towards Noble. Looking very good uh, in the HE Racing San Super Copa. It must be very daunting for a driver who is so used to handing over to a teammate and uh, not finding him there. It's uh, quite an unusual experience for the HE Racing team to go solo. They've very much had uh, Harry and Ed at, 
present at all occasions. Even last time out at Rockingham when Ed was suffering from a quite bad bout of flu, he still motored on despite the discomfort and he showed what a real hero he is out there. Now he's got to do it all by himself at a very hot Thruxton. So still battling on and out in front, Keith Webster making very light work of the Mazda MX-5, the Zero car. Skid Carrera at the wheel, soon to be handing over, no doubt, to Anthony Shemans. And it'll be interesting to see just how much of a gap Keith Webster can eke out. He doesn't have to worry about a driver change, but he still, of course, has to make the same length of pit stops uh, as his rivals. You have to make a minimum pit stop time. Uh, otherwise you will get penalised for it and drivers and teams in the past have done so on many occasions when you get a pit stop wrong. Here comes Keith Webster into the pit lane so you won't see him getting out of the car but you'll certainly see uh, a lot of work going on. Well actually you might see him getting out of the car because they uh, need to get him out of the car I think for the fuel change. Yes they open the door so once the fuel goes in uh, he will get back into the car, of course, because it's a regulation that no driver can be sitting in the car uh, when the car is being refueled. That's for safety reasons. So uh, Keith Webster out of the car. You can see him there just wandering the car, making sure there's no dents or bumps that are going to affect his aerodynamics. And there is uh, Mark Cunningham in the SG Racing Sound being pursued, I think that is, by Mike Wilds in the ING Sport BMW. I think they've made the change over now. If not, it's still Anthony. Now they're strapping Keith back into the BMW. Now, how's, he, how's his time compared to Ed Cockhill? That's what we really want to know. Is he going to be able to hold on to the overall lead? He certainly built up a massive gap. In the opening stages, he was going about three seconds a lap quicker than Ed Cockhill in the HE Racing Sayer. So he certainly is back with a vengeance. Now, into the pits again comes the TCR Sayer. Now, that's definitely not in the script. Into the pits they come. Sounding very slow, very sluggish. Oh, that, that, that's definitely not looking good. I think there might be a technical problem there uh, for Mike Robinson, and that would be a disaster for them. Great performance in the early part of the season in terms of speed. They were pole position at Silverstone, pole position at Rockingham. But here at Thruxton, it's uh, really not their day. Now, up the inside comes Mark Cunningham to take on... Is that still Tim Howard in the Mike Moss Racing BMW? We haven't seen them pit, so uh, I don't think it'd be long before Mike Moss gets his hands on the car in race trim for the first time this year since the change of team now. Now, there is Keith Webster going out of the pits. I can't see Ed Cockhill anywhere in sight, so it's looking likely that they've held on to things at the front of the field. Nicely done. There goes Mark Cunningham. Having got a little way now from the Mike Moss Racing BMW. More mechanical problems as Mike Wilds watches on. So that, that answers my question. Mike Wilds watching the TCR boys go to work on Mike Robinson's car. Oh, that's the MGA Master pulling off. Oh dear, oh dear. So that is Nicola Gillett who has recently got into the car. So uh, Mike Gorton has changed over to Nicola Gillett and the car is in trouble. Now that's a dangerous part of the circuit for the car to be beached and they'll need a recovery. Yellow flags there out as the, one of the BMWs, that's the Daymax car. So Tim Adams making his way on the inside of the Academy Motorsport Ginetta. I think that's still Chris Webster. Uh, I don't think I've seen that car made a, make a pit stop yet. So Matt Nickel Jones has not got into that car yet. Green flags there, that's signalling that the area is clear, but that's a rather dangerous point on the circuit and they will need to get a recovery team to that car. Well, that's a driver change there for Fold Sport. Simon Roach is out, Simon Mason is in, and it looks like this is the right moment for Anthony Wilds to do the same and hand over to his father, Mike Wilds. This team looking very strong for this championship. There's a potential them, for them sorry, to be leading the championship. Ed Cockhill, lapping Guillaume Grouchet in the Newbridge Porsche. The safety car, safety car, there it is, to recover the stricken MGA Mazda of Nicola Gillett and that is a big disaster for them but uh, for several teams it's also chaos for everybody else as everyone has to rewrite their strategy we're going to go for a quick break just as the safety car peels out Some of the biggest upheavals in American sports is in the world of motor racing, especially sports car racing. There's mergers, new series being proposed, audiences coming and going, drivers getting younger and younger. That's why you need the Racing Insiders on MAV-TV to help you navigate the turmoil. The Racing Insiders is a new weekly 30-minute news show covering sports car racing, whether it's being done professionally, globally, or by the local grassroots club. Award-winning journalist Bill Wood will host the weekly discussions, along with race-winning insiders Peter Keene in Florida and Jim Daniels in Tennessee. It's a fast-paced, edgy sports show. 
they'll even reach out to guest insiders to bring you behind the scenes insider information you'll want to know. This new era in sports car racing needs the Racing Insiders. The Racing Insiders on MAV TV, Thursdays at 2 and 5 p.m. Eastern, and again on Saturdays at noon. Welcome back to Thruxton, round four of the Brick Car Production Sports Car Series. We're under safety car conditions at the present moment due to the stricken MGA Mazda MX-5 of Nicola Gillett out on track. That's Ed Cockhill making his pit stop. Perfect timing as far as they're concerned. This is when everybody is going to take advantage of the safety car period. Now that they know that it's out on track, now everybody will be making their driver changes. I think we just saw Chris Webster peeling off to hand over to Matt Nickel-Jones. That's the number nine Intersport BMW. Adam Hayes uh, handing over to Mark Radcliffe as the Mazda MX-5 of Nicola Gillett is being being recovered by the marshals pretty much everybody is going to be making their pit stop now i think that's uh, duncan rogers the former banger champion now in the intersport mini having uh taken over from Chris Knox. Into the pits comes Rich Bennett in the Porsche and Skid Carrera in the Mazda. Oh, no, you're meant to be in that <laughs> meant to be in that grid slot, not the one that Rich Bennett was going into. So uh, Nicola Gillard is recovered. So Rich Bennett has handed over to Chris Randall. Skid Carrera will hand over to Anthony Shemmons. Ed Cockhill leads the pits and that's the uh, Intersport BMW of Kevin Clark now exiting the pits. Formerly Wayne Gibson, now Kevin Clark. Trying to see who else would have made their driver changes. I think that's pretty much everybody. So everybody is now getting ready to go for the second half of the race. The safety car peels back into the pit lane and it will be green flag. Away we go. Keith Webster flying off the line straight away to build up that comfortable cushion once again. And Ed Cockhill has followed through as well. No, sorry, no, that is not... Uh, that is not Ed Cockle, that is the Fold Sports Seat as uh, Keith Webster already makes an early move on the Porsche. That's currently Chris Randall in the back of that car. Normally a Lotus uh, stalwart, but he's uh, having a go in the Porsche 993. That car formerly raced by Johnny Molam years and years ago, so uh, certainly still some life in the old gal. As Ed Cockhill picks his way through the traffic, making his way past the Intersport Mini of Duncan Rogers. And out in front, still running through like a metronome, Keith Webster pulling away in the Jeff Steele Racing BMW. What has this team not won recently? It's certainly taken on pretty much everything before it in the last 12 months as far as uh, the championships they race in is concerned. They won the Brick Car 24 hours last year and they're certainly a good contender for the overall championship here in the Brick Car Production Sports Car Series. Up the inside, that's a move for track position. I'm certainly, I don't really know if it's uh, for race position or not but up the inside Kevin Clark I think they're on very different strategies very different laps but uh, Clark makes light work of Mason there separate classes as well so they'll want to keep out of each other's way on track so Gibson having handed over to Kevin Clark in the Intersport BMW will be taking a nice rest maybe Rachel can catch up with him a bit later to figure out what the conditions are like out there but Simon Mason now ready to bring the Fold Sport Seat into a competitive position but chased down in the similar Class 2 Seat Supercopa of Ed Cockhill, still running right up there in second place overall, trying to push further forward. And so now they fly through church once again, flat to the throttle. And it looks like Ed Cockhill is going to size up Simon Mason very quickly in the Fold Sport car as they run down to the club chicane. They are racing for the same class championship, but I'm fairly sure they're separated by a few positions. And that was a very nice move. Ed Cockhill, two wheels on the grass. You didn't leave me a lot of room, mate, but I'm certainly going to make the move anyway. I think there was a bit of indicating from him as well there. I think he was trying to uh, allude to the fact that there was not a lot of room left for him and he didn't really have any other way of uh, signalling it either that or the indicator's stuck on because it's certainly still going at it like mad. It's one of the things you find with uh, some of these cars. The indicator, once it starts, it doesn't want to stop and it, it can be a bit off-putting for the drivers following or uh, chasing. But Ed Cockhill still motors on in the HE Racing Seat. But uh, Simon Mason clearly hasn't had enough of racing wheel to wheel. They may look very similar, but these are two different teams in very similar race machines. And uh, they have a slight deficiency in terms of their power to the Class 1 machines, but they're still fighting big style out there. Simon Mason still chasing after Ed Cockhill. As uh, we said earlier on, no Harry Cockhill here this weekend, and that is unusual for them to be going it alone. Now there's Mark Radcliffe flying up the inside of Chris Randall in the Porsche 993. 
trying to move his way up through the field. He's doing a good job. Firmly in the top 10 now, the Intersport BMW. He's probably going to be looking at around a 7th or 8th place finish if he keeps up this pace. Looking very strong. And they're just he's just coming up to lap Mike Wilds in the ING Sport BMW now. They're looking very strong for their class victory. Now, that's going to be crucial if they can hang on to that because that should put them in the lead of the overall championship. It's going to be close, particularly with uh, Keith Webster looking likely to win his third, uh, his, sorry, the Jeff Steele Racing's third race of the season. It'll be Keith Webster's second win of the year because, of course, he wasn't there at Donington. Now, that's uh, on board with Shemans as he watches the Intersport BMW fly through, and so too does the HE Racing of Ed Cockill. Slight power disadvantage. Very differing classes in Class 2 and Class 4. But Anthony Shemans enjoying himself in the guest machine. That car is available for hire, so if you're sitting on the sidelines and you've got your answer license and you're thinking, hang on a minute, I want to have a play at this, we'll give Brick Car a ring and who knows, next time out at Snetterton you could be well in that uh, Zero Mazda. It's a very quick, nippy little car. And looking at the battles that uh, Skid Carrera had with Chris Webster earlier on, you could certainly go wheel to wheel in it. It's certainly not down on power, so uh, a perfect opportunity for anybody to give it a go. Now we're watching uh, the battle again between HE Racing, Ed Cockhill in the red and white Seat just behind Kevin Clark in the E92 BMW. And I'm fairly certain that this is actually for race position because Kevin Clark in the Intersport BMW team were able to gain a lot of time in the safety car period. But the Intersport BMW has actually had uh, a bit of a, an advantage gained from this one. Now this is Mark Radcliffe. Closing down on the back of the Mike Moss Racing BMW, and it is Mike Moss at the wheel this time. So again, it's BMW versus BMW, and it's M3 versus E46. Pushing hard up the inside comes Mark Radcliffe, and they do break for church. They're not that brave <laughs> through the inside line. I don't think that's bravery if they do go flat out through there when they're wheel to wheel. I think that's just plain stupidity, but they are certainly managing to make their way to the finish in good form the last thing they want to do is ram into each other and ruin their races that's the thing about endurance racing you can't cross the finish line with a bold move you have to do it with consistency and good rhythm so across the line once again then comes Mark Radcliffe they really are making good progress such a shame they had problems yesterday because it uh, really could have been quite a strong finish from them here today it's looking like a very strong finish on the Jeff Steel racing car you just saw Keith Webster fly through church once again and uh, the Mini getting out of the way of Ed Cockhill. That is the Intersport Mini, Duncan Rogers, a former champion in the world of banger racing. He decided to jack it in, and now he's racing on the circuit. And let's be honest, he's no slouch, certainly proving that uh, he can make a car last longer than 35 seconds, which is, of course, what you tend to find in banger racing. Any longer than that, and you really are a champion. Now, Keith Webster flies through Allard, down towards the first corner. I was hoping we could stay on board with him a bit longer so you could see what the circuit was like, but he makes his way to the braking zone. Hang to the left. Well, actually, he's hanging to the inside line now. Well, that's an unusual line. Sometimes uh, it, it tends to be that you hang to the left side of the circuit and then dive through for the right of the apex. But perhaps this is a bit of tyre conservation going on from Keith Webster because a lot of the drivers are going to struggle to keep their tyres alive. And oh dear, right onto the racing line. Keith Webster very nearly got bolted. and he shakes his fist at Anthony Shemans. Nothing Anthony can do about it. He, he clearly was unsighted there. But uh, Keith Webster throws his arm in the air. Oh, is that Ed Cockill slowing? It is! Ed Cockill in the set is in trouble! Oh dear, oh dear, so things are going terribly wrong for HE Racing. This is what happens when Harry doesn't show up. Oh dear, oh dear, so Ed Cockill, the car spluttering to a halt, and that's really going to cause problems for them. So uh, I think second place and a win in Class 2 may have just disappeared and we're going back to a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle between Mark Cunningham and Mike Moss. So uh, they battled in the early stages and they're battling out again. Now this is on board with Anthony Shemans once again and he loses it into the club chicane. Full pirouette, 360 degree and he manages to get it back onto the circuit again. So Anthony Shemans, a tiny bit of drama but he gets it back together again quickly. Nicely done, sir. Any other driver might well have uh, lost it into the kitty litter and that would have been the end of it. But uh, good recovery there. Now Keith Webster struggling with more back markers on the tail this time of Chris Randall in the Porsche. And he's already had a couple of issues with some of the slower drivers. 
no wave this time. He clearly felt that uh, that was not exactly a bad move. Oh, and a big, big lockup from Ed Cockhill again. More problems. I wonder if it is just brake problems for Ed Cockhill. Oh, no, I think it might be more than that. No, I think it's more div difficulties then in the HE racing set. It splutters to a halt. Now he's got it going again. Certainly not at racing speed, but I have a feeling that car is making a one-way trip to the pit lane. And that's uh, definitely not in the schedule. So that's game on for these guys. SG Racing in the Seat Supercopa. They can pick up the pieces from this and get a very strong performance. They won overall at Silverstone, don't forget. So uh, they certainly know how to win a race outright, but uh, if anything happens to Jeff Steele Racing, they are now very well placed to take advantage. And uh, it's looking likely that they will take second overall now. And if Ed Cockhill in the HE Racing Sat isn't going much further, well, I wouldn't exactly count out a Class 2 victory for Mike Moss Racing. That would be amazing in their first race. And again, more problems for Ed Cockhill. I think he's got a puncher now as well. So all kinds of issues there from Ed Cockhill. Puncher on the left front, misses the chicane completely and very nearly trips over the uh, Black Seat SG Racing car as he comes in. So this is definitely not in the plan. The mechanics go to work trying their best to get Ed back on circuit in good time. And uh, <laughs> the level of clothing the mechanics are wearing. Trying to, trying to keep cool more than anything else. So uh, the heat getting to the mechanics as well. There is the leader in Class 3, Mike Wilds, in the ING Sport BMW. They've pretty much led the whole way in Class 3. And as far as the overall championship is concerned, that's fantastic because they've got a potential now to uh, move into the lead of the Drivers' Championship, ING Sport, and uh, Anthony Wilds, uh, Mike Wilds, and Mike Lawson, of course, who is normally here, uh, who is not this weekend. They'll be delighted to leave Thruxton with the championship lead, and it's certainly looking good for them at the moment. This is the Fold Sports Sayer. Once again trying to chase down Kevin Clark in the Intersport. Well, Ed Cockhill rejoins. A lot of time lost, and it's certainly going to make the last half of the race interesting. We'll be back in a short while, and that's a very second-hand tyre. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Well, welcome back to Thruxton. You join us on board with Ed Cockhill as he negotiates the exit of the pit lane, having rejoined from a puncture. He's fortunate that he's able to keep going again in good position. He's still leading Class 2 at the moment, just in front of uh, Simon Mason in the Fold Sports sayout, but I don't think the gap is that big anymore. It's certainly going to be a great battle between the two of them. That's going to put uh, Mark Cunningham into play as well. They're trying to close the gap on Kevin Clark in the Intersport BMW. Currently running second in class. Oh, another spin! In that Shemans off into the dirt on the outside, the left side of the circuit. That's almost exactly where Nicola Gillett's car had to be recovered from earlier. And uh, fortunately, Shemans is able to rejoin the circuit. Not bad for anybody. Oh no, that's the HE Racing Seat again. That's it again into the pits. Very slow. That doesn't look good. In fact, I don't think he's even going to make it back to the pits. Very slow indeed. That sounds to me like an electrical fault. I don't think that's going to go very well for Ed Cockhill and the boys at HE Racing. That's very much a win in Class 2 gone. So it's going to put uh, Simon Mason in the Fold Sports Seat into the lead of the race. And I would not be surprised if that is the end of the road for HE Racing. And it's certainly not a rush to get things going again, is it? It's looking very terminal. Now we've got the battle out on circuit as the boys go to work on the HE Racing Seat. This is the battle for second place. This is Kevin Clark in the Intersport BMW trying to get away from the Simon Mason Fold Sports Sayout. Well, no, it isn't. Sorry, I thought it was the battle for second place because Mark Cunningham in the SG Racing Sayout is trying to close down the gap on Kevin Clark. But Simon Mason leading in the Fold Sport Sayout in Class 2 now after Head Cockhill's retirement in the HE Racing Car now swarming all over the back of Kevin Clark desperately trying to get past him and the Intersport BMW is not letting him go through. Well, this is a, a bit of a bizarre moment for Kevin Clark. And uh, if you look back, there is the Black Sayout of the SG racing car of Mark Cunningham trying to close down the gap to Kevin Clark. So Kevin Clark desperately trying to hang on to second place at the moment and Mark Cunningham is closing in all the time and Simon Mason in the fold sports set. Here he comes up the inside trying to get through 
He's leading class two and he'll be wanting to get away as well. He'll be wanting to eke out the gap because uh, Mike Moss in the BMW is still doing some brilliant laps. They could well have led and won this class, but they had a massively long pit stop uh, down to the fact this brand new team, they're privately run, of course, but uh, they've been using trolley jacks. And the other problem they've had is uh, their wheel fixings. They're using five stud wheel fixings uh, through the pit stops, which obviously takes a lot longer to change the tires. So they've lost an awful lot of time with that. And that means, of course, that they've now lost ground to the Fold Sport boys. But you can bet that on pure pace, they're very evenly matched. There goes Cunningham on the inside of Kevin Clark. So he takes over second place. Great move there from Mark Cunningham. He makes an opportunistic move. Kevin Clark was still stuck behind Simon Mason in the Fold Sport Seat, who clearly wanted to get track position on the BMW. And look at the gap already that Cunningham has pulled out. Now he goes to the inside line to get past Simon Mason on the straight. And that has put Mark Cunningham and the SG Racing boys into second place place not only in class one but overall as well delighted they will be with that as Mark Cunningham nearly loses it on the way into the club chicane he is pushing that hard to build up an advantage between himself and the Intersport BMW now into the pits comes Mike Wilds this is this is rather late I have to say what on earth are they doing this is for the this is the leading class three that's up for grabs and into the pits comes the Daymax BMW so they've come into the pit lane as well. This is definitely not scheduled. Now, I wonder if this is a fuel problem because they filled up their car completely to the brim in the circuit filling station. They've got no means of refueling that car. I have a feeling the car is out of fuel. That's a disaster for Tim Adams. Oh, dear, oh, dear. The Damex BMW boys were looking so good there. Just 17 years of age, Tim Adams, and that will be very frustrating as far as he's concerned. Well, there goes Mike Wilds. I wonder what they were checking there. Well, it looks like one of the mechanics may have had... Well, they certainly had some form of uh, equipment there. Maybe it was a battery or something along the lines. Maybe they're just playing safe towards the end. No, one man who certainly doesn't need to play safe towards the end. Keith Webster pushing all the way. And it won't be long before he sees the checkered flag. In fact, I think he might actually be on his run to the checkered flag. It's been a flawless drive for the Jeff Steele Racing BMW boys. And Keith Webster down to the club chicane, looking strong all day long. And he He's had it all his own way. The number four BMW, Jeff Steele Racing, has been absolutely dominant. He waves his hand. He knows it's going to be the third win of the season for the team. Three wins out of four. The chicken flag flies. Keith Webster wins it. Great performance here at Thruxton. Absolute dominance. They never looked back. They barely lost the lead. And a fantastic display from Keith Webster. Jeff Steele Racing have done it again. Brilliant drive then. It'll be second for Mark Cunningham in the SG Racing set. Kevin Clark in the Intersport BMW will be third. And look at Mark Cunningham. He's delighted with second place. And he's got every possible reason to be. He fought for that. Simon Roach and Simon Mason get the Class 2 honours. Anthony and Mike Wilds pick up Class 3 honours. And it's Chris Knox and Duncan Rogers who claim Class 4. What a race and some brilliant driving from all. Magnificent stuff, though, for Keith Webster. Well, congratulations. And also, the second time in the car. First of all, how did you find that race? And has this intense heat been uh, well, making a difference? It was a, a faultless race. Yeah. Uh, the car didn't miss a beat. We didn't have any issues. We managed the tyres. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the hardest part of the day has been the heat. Yeah. But we managed because, well, we work out our fitness as yeah. racing drivers yeah yeah and personally how have you found it because it's the second time you've been back racing i i'm i'm good i if i was to complain i've got a slight problem with my shoulder because yeah. it was immobile for so long but no it's absolutely perfect can't yeah. complain and have you had to work on your fitness what's changed for you away from i no i i do a lot of cycling and my new passion is time trialing so um i'm just into you know getting fit again and uh, and that's it now so really it's a you know being fit on a push yeah. bike helps massively in here. And uh, moving forward, you hope that Plan A works again in the next race? Well, I've still got a bit of catching up to do to uh, beat Michael's record. Oh. <laughs> but I reckon if we can win at Snetterton, then yeah. we're, on, we're in with a chance. Oh, well, look, good luck and well done. Again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, congratulations. Second in the race. Um, how did you find it, first of all? A uh, very warm day, obviously. Yeah. So that was one of the things you had to worry about. You had to worry about nutrition of the car as well. Tyres was an issue around here. So we had to be very mindful of the tyres. Um, I went out in the first session, got a fairly good start. Dropped back a little bit, I'm scared to say, in the uh, last part of my run. So I left Mark quite a bit of work to do yeah. for him to take over. Not miles, but a little bit more than I'd like to. But he did his sterling run, as always. And uh, 
made us a very good position and a fine finish. So yeah, really over to Mark, I think. <laughs> um, and when you took over, I mean, I haven't seen the pits that busy in a long, long time. How did you feel taking over? Uh, it was a lot to do on a hot, sunny day. Um, but um, no, I, I was confident, really. We haven't really done much driving around here, so we didn't really know where we was going, yeah. to be honest. But, you know, so, um, but after a few, few you know, laps in the car, I just felt that the car was fantastic and the best thing about it was the car never went off you know for, I reckon I could have set the same sort of lap time on the last lap as what I did on the first lap so you know I have to say it was fantastic we just found a sweet setup more luck than judgment I think it was more a bit about um, yeah. give that yeah. a go and, and, it, and it worked perfectly so I have to say it was just a, a great setup and the car worked peachy so um, yeah it absolutely absolutely great and when when they said the, the Gibson Clark car was 30 seconds in front of us I was like yeah pop open no hope but uh, yeah give it I'll give it a go don't never never say never and, and sure enough they were reading it out and I don't even think they could believe it that was like Mark just keep doing what you're doing and yeah, you, you, yeah, you know you're gonna yeah. do it and sure enough when I've caught them up I think they were in awful trouble with tires I think by the looks yeah. of things and 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 sure enough um, we managed to get past them and um, yeah second well congratulations a third uh, how did you find the race uh, it was very trying that's yeah. pretty we didn't put tyres on at the halfway point and uh, really I think we should have because we were right down to the canvas on the last few laps but um, we also ran out of petrol on the last lap as well. So, so first of all, with the tyres like that, how did it affect the last few laps and were you aware of what state those tyres were in? Yeah, I was aware. Um, it, it, it was a multitude of things really because at the halfway point there was a, a safety car yeah. and so we were looking after the two other cars that come in and then Wayne come in unannounced as well, so we were all running around like headless chickens and I didn't get to look at the tyres, so because I wasn't expecting him, I wasn't ready, so I hadn't got time, I had to get my helmet on, get in and go. Um, we didn't quite get enough fuel in it either, it was just, but it, it was good, we got to the, well, we still classified third, yeah, so. Yeah, it's it really was, good. It was good. And how do you think the heat affected you? Did it affect you? Do you like racing in this kind of weather? Does anyone? Uh, it is, it is hard work, yeah. you know, but I, I don't mind it, it's, it's great, it's good practice for the Spain 24 hour, hopefully. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And moving forward for the next race, obviously the tyres need to be sorted. Uh, yeah, what else can you take forward from this race to that? Um, well, you learn something every petrol. time about the cars, yeah, we're going to take at least one more tyre yes. and, and some more petrol. <laughs> well, Class 4 winners, congratulations. How did you find the race? Well, it's rather easy because Chris came on board and he did all the hard work for yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I just had to bring it home. But I must say, I would like to dedicate the race to Danny Russell, the usual partner and the owner of the car. But sadly, he's on holiday in the Val de Homo in Portugal at the moment. So. Hard life. Yeah, it is tough. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah our first win, first time at Fuxton for me. So. Uh, and how did you find the track? I came in the gate. It's all there in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> Which is always good when you get a race on it. No, no, I, um, we had a few laps in uh, qualifying because everybody wanted to go in the car. So uh, we've got two or three laps under our belt. And then um, let's, let's just keep turning right, isn't it, really, and watch for the chicanes. Yeah. But as I say, Chris did the hard work. You know, an experienced, challenged man and former champion. So um, I'm just the old man I had to bring it home. That's good, though. Check a flag. So uh, thanks to Chris for doing that. He did all the hard yards. Um, and Chris, in this heat, everyone keeps talking about the heat, and I saw the pits so, so busy. Did you find it a struggle at all? Um, yeah, we had about two litres of water on board, but about ten laps into the race I managed to lose the, the tube that I was drinking from, so uh, coming round some of the faster corners with one hand searching for the, the tube was a bit... Seconds of that then, huh? was, uh, <laughs> was it was interesting. But moving forward from this race, has it got you even more excited for all the others? Well, it's the first time I've been in a car this year. Um, searching for sponsorship is always a hard thing, so... As plug a, it, plug it! <laughs> But I'd like to thank Danny for, for giving me the opportunity to get back in a car again. So a great day's racing at Thruxton. Only two teams have won three out of four races, and it's the Lawson and Wilds ING Sport combination that lead the championship heading into Snetterton just in front of Jeff Steele Racing. We'll see you then in a few weeks' time.